Welcome to the 2015 Rally America National Championship, combining some of the world's best drivers on some of the toughest stage roads in North America. Through eight rounds of racing, spanning coast to coast, across the United States, through mud, snow, dust, and forest, one radio show is there covering all the action. This is Rally America Radio. All right, this is Jim Beaver with Rally America Radio. We are at the finish line of day number one. Those of you just tuning in, sorry, we've had uh, quite a few issues with uh, with Internet access today, so sorry you're getting these late, but David Higgins finishing up first today. We're going to see if we can catch up with David real quick. He's trying to trying to get uh, get the car packed up and loaded so he can... Uh, so he can uh, go and get something to eat and, and get a good night's sleep early start tomorrow. But uh, the Subaru looking beautiful out on the stages today. And uh, David just absolutely, uh, absolutely dominating things. All right, catching up with David Higgins after, uh, after the first day here. We're uh, at the finish of day one. Uh, how's everything, David? Yeah, it was a um, good last group, really. We took the right tire again with the ice tire. It was... A lot more slick that time than it was even the first time out, but we made a few changes to the car in service, um, made a, a differential change, which is why the guys were doing a gearbox change, and the car was definitely a lot better. Um, managed to pull a little bit more time out of the guys behind, but obviously the, the, the downside was the last stage again being gravel, it just destroyed another set of tyres, so we really are getting, getting low on the ice tyres for tomorrow now, so... But it's, I think it's always safer to take the best tyre you can when it's dark because you don't see the change in, in the um, road surface as much. So it was a safer thing to do that and use our best tyres today than it would be to try and save some for tomorrow and maybe not get there. So, But everything's all good. And how did the stages change? I know obviously you know, running them twice today, how did they change from the first pass to the second pass? Yeah, the second pass, just the, the, the icy bits get way worse because every time a car spins a wheel, it just polishes. So it's just a, like what you normally expect on a second pass of a, of a winter rally. They do polish a lot more. Um, at no point did we ever get down to any more gravel. It was just getting worse and worse with the ice. So, But our times were good. We weren't very, very close to our times we did in the morning, which, which shows obviously the improvements we made in the car were for the good. But last day I tried to back off again to try and save the tyres, but even then I think it was a bit too late. And they're pretty, They may go again for a, for a loop, but there's not a lot left on them. Well, and heading into tomorrow, obviously you've done recce. You've seen uh, how the stages look today. Uh, heading into tomorrow, uh, you know, what, what are you looking forward to and, uh, you know, what are your predictions? The main thing I'm looking forward to is the finish, to be honest, because it's not a whole lot of fun when, in these conditions because it's just so, so fast when you're on the on the grippy stuff and, and the roads are so wide. But, you know, you get to a bit where there's absolute sheet ice. There's no, di- like on snowdrift, you have a bit of a snowbank to, to use. We've got absolutely nothing here, so... Every stage seems like it's taken a lot longer than it should do, but tomorrow's going to be a very, very difficult day. The first few stages are quite twisty, um, probably more ice, which maybe be a little bit easier in the way that it'll be more consistent. Um, but then the middle loop of stages are quite abrasive, so um, obviously we, to try and make a set of tyres last all day tomorrow could be pretty tough, so we're probably at some point tomorrow going to have to take a tyre that we don't really want to be on. Um, but that's the, that's, that's the beauty, that's the compromise of rally, isn't it? Yeah, well, we'll let you get some rest. I know it's a long night, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. All right, we're catching up with David Sterks, uh, pulling into uh, to the end of day one. Uh, looks like physically in second. Uh, you know, uh, it looks like you, you passed Adam out there on course at some point, correct? Yes, uh, so in the, in the first stage, uh, we, we got a flat halfway in the stage, so we lost some time. And then in the second stage, we, we started, and we started to smell some some heavy smell of oil and so I was concerned because I thought it was my car at first and uh, then we started to get some dust that was still in the air and then we saw him on the side of the road and then the the smell went away so we understood that the problem came from his car and not ours and uh, yeah it's um, it's too bad because uh, we, we will have like a, a good fight and a good some good fun so it's it's not so good. Yeah, how were how were the stages? Second pass over them tonight, uh, running running in the dark. How were the stages? Well, uh, the, the stages were okay, and, and surprisingly, the the, the paths that were sli- very slippery at the first uh, first loop were pretty, may, way better the second one. Then some part where there was a lot of grip in in the first part, there was no grip in the second one, and then I had also uh, issues with my lights. The the two the two side ones were loose, so they were facing the ground and one the the sky. And the other one, they don't go far enough. So it's um, 
in the high speed, it was hard to see where I was going. So I probably lost a lot, some good time, but it's okay. We're, we're for sure still in second, so I mean, there's nothing. Not, all right. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. We'll let you get some rest tonight. And early start tomorrow. Uh, I don't know. Uh, really? <laughs> All right. Catching up with Brent and Kelly. Just pulling in here to uh, the finish of day number one. Tell us uh, Tell us about those night stages. Uh, I, I mean, the night stages were a little bit more fun. Uh, a little more grippy in the gravel stuff. We made a lot of notes on the first pass, so we were able to push a little bit where there was the grip. But again, those icy sections were just tiptoeing. So had a bit more fun, but keeping it together looking forward to tomorrow yeah well and i know you uh in particular were telling me you were hoping that uh you know with the lights uh it would help with the glare off the ice to be able to tell where where there was actually ice did that help at all on the first stage i was it didn't at all <laughs> i was looking for the grip but it was, it was just too patchy but uh and later i think stage the third stage on that loop it was very very more visible you could fully see the glare ice on there and that made a big difference you know looking to figure out where i could break and actually go a little bit deeper into the corners and it made a big difference all right well heading into uh heading into tomorrow uh you know what do you expect i know obviously uh you know you you know the course been through on recce uh you know what, what are you expecting um more of the same really just consistently inconsistent pretty much uh i know i think we were sitting fifth when we went out i think we bumped up to fourth place in the national now uh, i'm not sure what happened to adam adam's out but I'm sure he'll be back in tomorrow. So it'll be interesting. We'll just kind of keep the same pace. Uh, we were really looking forward to a gravel push this event, and it's unfortunate the ice is here, but we're here. We're having fun. We're just looking for a finish so we can get to gravel and actually push and see what we can do for real. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. We'll let you get some rest. Awesome. Thank you. All right. We're here at the end of day number one, catching up with ACP. Uh, walk us through the night stages, my friend. Uh, well, I mean, you, you could probably walk through faster than some folks went through. Uh, we uh, pushed pretty hard, and uh, I think we had some pretty good results. We caught a bunch of cars and, and uh, passed them and, and uh, had uh, good times uh, to make up for our earlier breaking of a tie rod. Uh, we went to a really excellent uh, BF Goodrich tire and made up a bunch of time that way, too. So we really uh, we sort of made a wrong tire choice in the first leg, which led to us going off and breaking the tie rod. So uh, with a better tire choice and putting the hammer down, we're doing great. We're just uh, trying to claw back on the podium and doing some Math and figuring whether we can do that. That's our goal now. Um, it'll look, it's treacherous. It's like, it's ridiculously treacherous. And you cannot blink for a second because you could go from beautiful, grippy gravel, like sandpaper gravel, to glare, gnarly ice. And, uh, you know, there are quite a few pucker moments. Now, fortunately, we kept our noses clean and um, actually had a good time. Uh, I, I was frustrated after breaking the tie rod, after going off, losing time. And, and now I'm, uh, I'm, we're all smiling again. We're having a good time in the car and just focusing on getting back on the boat. Podium. Well, and, and talking about tomorrow, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, conditions tonight not ideal by anybody's, you know, standards. But uh, heading into tomorrow, what are you expecting? Tomorrow's actually, uh, it's more slippery tomorrow, but in a way less difficult because it's going to be consistently more slippery. Tonight we had great traction in some places and no traction in other places. Tomorrow is pretty much no traction everywhere, so at least people will know what to expect. Um, and it'll be a you know, challenge for everybody to, uh, to, to go well tomorrow. Uh, you know, with the, uh, with the Ford Performance Fiesta ST here with Team O'Neill, we, we know what we have to do to set up for tomorrow. We've got some great tires. We've got our strategy. We've got great notes. So there's no reason we can't go well and win every stage in two weeks drive the question is will that be enough to make up for the 18 19 minutes it took me to change a, a tie rod that's our challenge now well i gotta t tell you i like your style man two minute interview and you gave three sponsor plugs that's uh, that's talent my friend F 15 years at it and and, and you'll, you'll learn but you know what like we really do have great support from everybody so i don't i don't i don't feel bad telling you that that we got a lot of support out there all right well thanks for catching up with us and we'll see you tomorrow take care thanks all right, we've got cars uh, still trickling in here. It's night. Conditions around zero with the wind at well below zero. Rumors of storm sometime in the next 24 hours, possibly moving in to, uh, to the eastern Missouri area. So uh, definitely a lot of storylines heading into tomorrow. Don't forget Lachlan O'Sullivan, Nick Roberts, both out. They are both rumored to be back tomorrow. I guess uh, Lachlan, it sounds like having, uh, having some coolant issues. It looks like Nick Roberts, obviously he had electronic issues. Adam Yeoman, uh, we can confirm that he is out, but they're going to try and get that car going tomorrow. Some type of uh, burning oil type of problem uh, is what we understand, but he was parked on the side of the road. Lots of carnage out there. Cars parked every which way. Tires, tires, tires was the name of the game today. We'll have a full recap of the tire situation 
first thing tomorrow morning when we kick things off for day two of Rally America, Rally in the 100 Acre Wood. This is Jim Beaver on behalf of Rally America Radio. We'll see you in the morning. Lots of people choose Ford S-Series trucks to help run their lives, run their construction crews, their farms, and their own companies. They also run their kids to practice, run out for dinner, even run away for the weekend. Because Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty are the trucks that help you run on all cylinders. Year after year after year, Ford F-Series delivers outstanding toughness, capability, and efficiency. That's why Ford F-Series has been America's best-selling truck 38 years running. So you're likely to run across one or two at the next job site you pass, the next youth league practice, and the parking lot at your favorite restaurant. Because when you need to run around all day, a run-of-the-mill truck just won't do. That's why the hardest-working men and women out there run with America's number one truck, Ford F-Series. Visit your Carolina Ford dealers now to save big on America's best-selling trucks or check out special offers at yourcarolinaford.com. Ford F-Series, built Ford tough. 